The Mayan calendar is the most accurate calendar ever discovered on Earth. And humanity is intrigued how an ancient tribal people could be so precise, more precise than modern man and all of his technologies. Now humanity is looking to the, to the Maya to understand this date of December 21st, 2012 that is emphasized within the Mayan calendar. And the Maya have responded. What higher source that is more respected than the president of the National Mayan Council of Elders of Guatemala, all 440 Mayan tribes representing this primary leader of the Mayan nation in Mexico, Belize, and Honduras, and Guatemala. His name is Don Alejandro Cerillo Perez. Today, I will translate into the language of the modern world what the Mayan people themselves have to say about 2012. And if I err, I'm sure the Mayan Council will let both of us know, but they did give me authority to speak. The Maya wish to inform you that the world that you know, that you live within, is not what you think it is. We modern people think that the world is solid and real and that nothing can change it. It is fixed and will go on for eternity without or with or without our presence. The Maya wish to inform you that this is not true. The world is really images that can be controlled by consciousness, especially consciousness that is connected directly into the human heart. This is not a normal public broadcast. If you're looking for that, you've come to the wrong place. You are about to enter into a way of being that is only understood by the ancient world. The modern world has almost no idea of what we are about to discuss, and generally, it doesn't even know that it exists. And yet, this way of being is exactly what you, the modern world, need at this moment in history, but you probably don't know it. Humanity is very much in the situation of a butterfly moments before it came, comes out of its cocoon. Everything it knew is about to change, and a completely new world is about to emerge. Hello, my name is Drumbalo Melchizedek, and you're probably wondering why a white man is standing here uh, authorized to speak for the Mayans. Well, that's going to take a little bit to explain. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to tell you a little bit about my life. And in doing that, I think you'll understand why I'm standing here. Like most people on Earth, when I was young and in my 20s, uh, and sometimes people a lot earlier, uh, want to know why they're here on Earth and what life is all about. And what is this planet and stars and suns? What, why are we here? What, what is really going on? Well, I became so intrigued with this that uh, I began to study, and my first place of study was in college. I went into college and I chose physics and mathematics. Not because I wanted to become a physicist or make money. That wasn't the purpose. I thought that the physicists and the mathematicians must know what the stars and planets are. And I went for years and years studying this until I finally came to the conclusion that they don't know any more about this than I do. I then switched from the left brain to the right brain and began to study art and art history and painting. And I spent another two years studying that and it really helped. I went through 20,000 year, 20, years of art history from caveman to modern time and slowly I began to get an inkling through the female side of the brain of what what life was about but I wasn't even getting close. Time went on and uh, during this time while I was going to college I decided also to go and to begin to study meditation and I did this through beginning with the, the Hindus, I began to study mantras. And I, I had a, a, a Hindu guru who began to teach me these things, and I became very serious about it. And I sat down and began to study this. Well, one day, while I was uh, deeply in meditation, uh, a phenomena took place in the room where I was, something I did not expect. I did not ask for it to happen, it just happened. 
these two spheres of light, roughly this big, two of them came in together, came right up to me on both sides here, about this far away. They were brilliantly bright. One was a beautiful uh, ultraviolet color. The other one, other one was a very bright green color. I didn't know what it was. Two balls of light standing there in my room. And then inside my head, telepathically, I heard these words, uh, we are not separate from you. We are you on another level of existence. I didn't know what it meant, but it began uh, an inquiry into existence that they were, began to lead through my life. And in my interaction with the two spheres of light, I was led by them to over 70 spiritual teachers around the world and studied almost every form of spiritual meditation on the planet. But at the same time, the two spheres of light guided me into the indigenous world to begin the understanding of their ancient ways. Then the angels at one point, or the spheres of light, they are actually angels from their point of view, uh, uh, began to lead me into the indigenous world. And this is where the Mayans come in. They led me to a tribe in uh, uh, New Mexico called the Taos, the Taos Pueblo. And I spent 14 years with them. Uh, uh, one of their teachers there is a man named Tellus Good Morning. He's now passed on. He was the head of the peyote church for the entire United States. And he took me on and began to teach me. And other members of the Taos Pueblo uh, began to also teach me. One was the actual Kasiki, or what is, is called a Kasiki, which is the spiritual leader of the Taos tribe. And he used to be the chief of the Taos Pueblo. And uh, uh, he taught me about crystals and about fetishes and how you could uh, understand and change the outer reality uh, through the use of crystals and fetishes. By, by car a fetish is a, a stone that you carve into a, a shape. And if you know how to use it, you can actually change your life in ways that no one would ever believe. But I saw it. I watched it happen. I couldn't deny it. And, um, and slowly, uh, they gave me, after 14 years, I had an indigenous training that changed me in ways that prepared me for going out into the world to begin to work with other tribes. The spheres of light then led me into what were called the Anasazi. They were the ancient ones that lived before the Hopi and the, the Sioux and the Lakota and the Cheyenne and, the, and all these other tribes. They were much older. And I found them on other dimensional worlds and began to work with them uh, for a period of time. And then I was led to the Maya. And, uh, and in 1985, uh, I was directed uh, to go into uh, the Yucatan and to begin to study there and to, and to uh, do ceremony there. I was led into sacred temples such as Ushmal and Labna and Koba and Chichen Itza and Tulum and Cajunlich and Palenque and even into Guatemala to Tikal. And it was initiation for me. And, uh, and the Maya watched as I began to work on this level. And slowly after that, a few years later, I met a man named Huns Batsman, who is a Mayan shaman and Mayan priest, and who is connected with the Grand Itza Mayan Council out of the Yucatan. And he began to uh, teach me the Mayan way of perceiving the world, which was...